I have started learning WIST and this is the very first step that we get to know that how WIST works and what are the options we get. So uh, this is also the very first step to create web apps using Webflow and WIST is one of the very great option that we can make use of. Um, so in this case, what we are going to do is we are going to fetch data from Airtable and we will display it on Webflow site using WIST. So how we can do this, we can do this. Uh, let's create a project first. Let's create a WIST project. And this is going to be Airtable integration. So this is the name of the project. The staging domain will be will be this one. So it's already there. And let's copy this code. As I have already installed the FinSuite uh, Chrome extension so that I, I have access to the uh, to the custom code area from the this dashboard. I do not have to go to the settings so I can just access the custom code area from here. So let's paste that code and save and let's publish to the selected domain. Once, once it's done, let's press continue and it will load your site in WIST dashboard. Yeah, so this is the very first step. Now, the second step is to connect a table with WIST. So let's do that. So let's click on this plus icon and give it a name. So it is a table, select your app. So in this case, it is a table. So for the private key, you have to go to your account settings and you have to go, let's, let's open again. Um, let's duplicate and go back to account so from here you just have to go to developers hub and you can copy this private key and paste it here so we are done with the second step and for the third step we have to send a request to a table and we have to set a trigger that when this request will be sent so there are two steps um, for data in. So the first one is create a request. In this case, uh, it's we can call it called a table request. And let's select an app that we just added. Uh, select the API type and that is going to be the database because we want to fetch items list. Uh, the method is going to be get item list. The base in the in my case is Wizard test table and the table is going to be the team. So let me show you my A table as well. So this is the table, this is the base, and this is the table inside. So it, it, it is called team. And yes, so in the data end, we are done with the first, we are we're done with the first step that we are sending a request. You can see an overview here that what we are doing here. So we are sending request and the request name is a table request. So the now the next is we have to set a trigger that when this request is going to be sent. So we will set like we will select an element on our page and we will say that when this element loads, so we have to send the request. OK, so in that case, that is going to be the that is going to be the team list. So the parent element of all the items. So we will say that when this specific element loads on our page, so we will send the request. So we have to set an attribute to this element. And in this case, it is going to be, so the name is going to be the same every time and you have to select the value. Uh, so the value should be something that that is related to that specific element so that you can uh, you can recognize that what from where this attribute is coming from. So in this case, it is theme list. Let's go back and let's try to create a trigger. Select a trigger that is going to be attribute based and the attribute is going to be the theme list. Okay, so now we are done with the data in. So the trigger will be, it. it the request will be triggered when this specific item is get loaded on the page. 
so let's go to the actions and create our first action and that is going to be render uh, items on the page so it is going to be render list and so the attribute will be the attribute will be team item we have created template on our webflow website and this is the first item and in the same way all the items will be displayed so this specific element contain all the other elements inside so we want we want to consider this as the first item in the list so let's give it an attribute wizard team item and we will use this attribute for rendering the list okay so select this attribute and inside the configuration we have to render list and the render list is going to be an array so what information we have so let's play let's see what that what information we get so these are all the items that are being rendered on wizard and in this specific case we have to select the first one in the list set it done and now we have to select the variable if i just go back and if i show you here so you can see that it's it is the every element is starting from r dot one dot d but there is a change in the value it is two it is one here and it is zero for the very first element so how the array starts is the array always starts from zero for the first element it will be the value will be one for the second element so we have to use a variable here that will change its value for every element so in this case let's go to the page data and create a new variable and that variable you can set any name to to this variable so it can be it can be iterator it can be just i it can be just a variable it can be anything so let's give it a name i and we do not have to set the initial value make it close let's get back to actions let's get back to render list and select the variable for index which is going to be v dot i and we are done let's refresh this page and let's see that are we getting all the items on the page rendered on the page scroll down and yes we have right now four items in the list and we are getting four so let's delete this one and let's see whether the list gets updated or not refresh the page yes so we have three now so it means that we are getting the correct amount of items from a table so now let's move on to the next action and that is going to be let's render the member names on the page let's go to action let's go to let's create a new action there and the action name is going to be render name and let's select an attribute that is going to be so when i hover over the attributes it will show me that this attribute belongs to which element on the page so we have to select the attribute for the name and for your information i have set all the attributes um so this is the name i have set wizard member name this is the job title attribute member job this is for the bio this is for the linkedin link you can see that wizard linkedin you can twitter so you can you can set any value to this uh, attribute but that value should uh, resembles that what this attribute is going to be so after setting the attributes for the name we have to select the members name attribute and for the configuration we have to set the text and the text type is plain text and now we have to select the value and the value is what we are getting from a table so we can just link that value to that specific attribute so let's make it name and we have to replace this zero because zero means that uh, this name is 
um this name is for the first element so let's try with zero we i'm i'm not going to do anything right now so let's make it done let's refresh the page and let's see what we get so it is terry dactyle for every single member why it happens because we do not because there is no variable it's a fixed value so it it is just so what wiz is doing is wiz is picking so this is the first element in the list let me show you that let me show you the list then you will get understand so you can see the zero is the first element and what this element is where is the name for this element here is the name so that is terry dactyle so what's the second element what's the name of this person second on the list so this is ida bug and third one is the olive u okay so what it is doing is it is displaying this name the first name in the list for all the items we do not want this we want that the the second item in the list should have its own name so let's replace this with variable so now it, it will work so this value will get updated it will be zero it will be one and it will be two so we have all the names we can render all the names for every single item so let's save and let's refresh and let's see what the results we get okay we have the team list we have done something wrong render list no okay it's all good so now we are getting the correct names here now we have to do we have to perform the same steps for other other elements um it is going to be exactly the same for the job title that we have to set the text and we have to select the value and just replace the index with the variable it is going to to be the same for the bio let's move on to the image because this is something different let's create a new action let's create new action it it is called render image and this is going to be the member image and the configuration is going to be the so it, it is not text it is not um it is not rendering list it is not the style it is not on click so we can set it from set html attribute okay and what is going to the, to be the key let me show you image HTML tag attributes. So this is the tag we used in HTML to to display an image. And what image is going to be displayed? So we use this attribute. So in our case, this is going to be the key, and this is going to be the value of that key. So let's go back to Vist, and the key is going to be SRC. And the value is going to be so we have the value we have all the values here so in this case we need the image url and there we have and as you know okay let me show you one more thing so for the images it is always zero for every single element so you can see that for the first element it is zero for the second element it is again zero and for the third element it is again zero so this value is not changing so we do not have to put an attribute here we just have to put an attribute at this position so let's make it w dot i and make it done and refresh the page voila so now you can um see the images of the our team members so now the next step is going to be for the links because now you can update the job titles you can update the bio that's not an issue for you now now how we can how we can change the link let's create a new action it is going to be render linkedin url and let's select an attribute that is linked in in our case in my case and the link will also be set with set html attributes 
and the key is going to be different so it is not src let me show you that what this attribute is going to be it is going to be for the anchor tags it is going to be href so this tag this attribute is used when we want to set a url to a specific anchor so let's go back set href and what the value is going to be now you understand now you you know that what value we are going to set so we are going to set the linkedin url and we have to replace this zero with the variable we are done with it and we are done with this so the same process will be repeated for the twitter link for and for the dribble link uh, so now you can do that from yourself as well so let's refresh this page and let's test this link as well let's click um preview and click on click on this link now i can go to the linkedin it, it's working great it's working great so this is how you can connect your apps you can fetch data and you can create actions to display that data on your site and this is my first step to that i learned about first and i learned a lot and if you learned something new please uh, share your feedback and if you know a process that is better than my process because i'm very early stages of wisd so please share it with me so that i can also learn from yourself as well um and we can learn more about in the next videos uh, see you and thank you so much for your time